Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two running backs will take the field today in hopes of leading their team to victory out on that field. As Lynch's Raiders going up against McCoy's Bills. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, we are about 15 miles south of downtown Buffalo at what's now known as New Era Field here in Orchard Park. The folks in Buffalo love their bills, and a moment ago, they entered to the delight of this sold-out crowd. They're set for football as their bills will do battle with the Oakland Raiders. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. On the return, it's Brandon Tate. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. Leading them out in his seventh year now out of Virginia Tech, Tyrod Taylor. In his two years as a starting quarterback in Buffalo, he had over 1,100 yards on the ground. So we know that he can scoot, but don't underestimate his right arm either. 37 touchdown passes and just 12 interceptions in those two seasons. here on first down. He's got the hook up to Andre Holmes. A good pick up there at 22. I know we just saw a nice throw and catch, but how about the big guys up front they buying that time. time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Quickly now, here's the Buffalo offense. Well, the one thing we do know about Buffalo, they love to run the football. Number one in the NFL in 2016 in rushing yardage. Expect that to continue, but look for an upgrade in the passing game. If they add that, they could be really dangerous. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. back with one complete and he'll be taken down at the 44 yard line they'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down but that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield you want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter can play out wide who could not only get open but when they're covered can uncover themselves downfield and create catches could be four down territory even if they don't get this but they need just a here few inches here on third now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover.
Colton Schmidt, fourth-year man from UC Davis, on to punt it away. Back deep for the Raiders, Jalen Richard. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Derek Carr will bring out the Oakland Raiders who are just looking to bounce back. Gosh, they started 2-0 this season, but now they look up after week six. They're 2-4. They've lost four straight. And I'm still trying to process that because there's no way I saw a four-game losing streak in 2017 with this Raiders team. I thought they'd made nice improvements in the offseason. And with Derek Carr leading them, although he did miss a game due to injury, I just thought the offense might be unstoppable at times. They've got to find a way to pick up the pace. Uh, the offense averaging just right around 13 points a game over that four-game losing skid. Car to throw after the play fake to Lynch. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Second and 10. And it's hauled in by Jared Cook. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. Here's a man who started as a Buffalo Bill, Marshawn Lynch. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, if we had any questions, that run kind of answered him. He's still Marshawn Lynch. Hasn't lost a thing. Maybe running with a renewed sense of purpose and energy after that year off. First down, Lynch. Lynch busting free. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. No surprise watching Marshawn Lynch scatter bodies as he runs. But I remember doing games of his at Cal. And I remember the moves, the jump cuts, the elusiveness, as well as the strength. After the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. On second down, Lynch. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. You know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say, play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe think and pass. This is Jalen Richard, and he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. 
I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now they'll throw with Carr. It's caught by Clive Walford. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? Well, yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish him off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Car now on first down. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Second down and four. Shotgun now for Carr. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. A Raiders first down, Carr hooking up with Cook. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? And this seemingly endless drive continues. First down, the run with Lynch. And an alley to run. And down inside the 15 he goes. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we go to Orchard Park. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Into the red zone, it's Carr. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Jerry Hughes in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. That's something you see a whole lot of, a sack of Derek Carr and due in large part to a good O-line. Carr was sacked on less than 3% of his dropbacks last year, lowest in the league. Oakland knew it was important to take care of their quarterback. They picked up Donald Penn, Kelechi Osemele, and Rodney Hudson in recent years, and it's paid off.
And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They'll run it now out of the gun. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. And Mr. Cooper, Amari, a headliner in this offensive unit. Brandon, it's rare that you get guys so polished coming out of college, but Amari Cooper has carried himself like a pro probably since he was six years old. He is a terrific talent. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though, third and long. From the gun, it's Carr. And this is caught. Crabtree, touchdown Raiders. Michael Crabtree, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Raiders have taken the early lead. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Extra point attempt to come here. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here and it's good. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it winds up in six points for the Raiders. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Back onto the field now comes the Bills' offense. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. That's caught. Zay Jones, the rookie. He got 29 yards that time. Zay Jones, a second-round pick from East Carolina. Some thought could have been a first-round pick from East Carolina. High-volume guy in East Carolina. I mean, the big-time catch, 158 of them in 2016. And he's an NFL legacy. His father, a longtime linebacker in the league. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Come on, let's go. Press 38. Now Taylor on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Quickly now, the starting 11 for the Oakland defense. Well, sometimes the numbers really don't tell the full picture because Oakland was 26th in total defense in 2016. But guess what? They were tied for first in turnover margin at plus 16 with Kansas City. That makes up for a lot of other issues when you're able to take the ball away. On 
on second down, it's McCoy. And he'll get only a couple down to the 44. Let's get into the weeds here a little bit, partner. The Raiders last year, road games only, committed the most penalties in NFL history for the most penalty yardage in NFL history. Yeah, hard to believe in something they have to shore up when they're playing away from home. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now it's Taylor. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Patrick DeMarco, the fullback, the one he was looking for. And it's second down. And on second and ten now. Now Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Play action. Now Taylor. And this is going to be incomplete. On fourth down, Sean McDermott trots the field goal unit out there. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Hauschka's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So a good kick there, and they wrap up the drive by putting three on the board. And you know, let's face it, you're not always going to come away with six. Defense in the NFL are just too good. But you've got to come away with something. And there, they get three. To the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Fights through him. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Movement there on the offensive line, a little quick, and a five-yard penalty. the penalty Lynch looking to find a lane but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage officially no gain on the play and it's second down 
Quickly now, a look at the Buffalo defense. This is a defense that's always carried itself with a swagger, and one of the things they take great pride in, rushing the passer. They were sixth against the pass in 2016. Have to shore up their run defense, though. Just 29th. That's quite a surprise, considering the athletes they have on that side of the ball. Second down. A right side catch by Crabtree. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. A good pickup there. 13 yards as they get closer for third down. The Raiders on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This time they face a third and two. Carr looking to throw on third and two. And complete right side to Cook. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Carr finding his new tight end Cook for the Raider first down. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. And maybe a little of both. opportunity to just want to ride there a drop pass I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs second down here after the incomplete pass gun and he'll rumble for about five up close to the 40. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down it was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down so they were behind the sticks so to speak they need to make up some ground and they did. Before they can get settled in here, time expires on the first quarter of action. 7-3 the score, and we're back to upstate New York after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Raiders in possession of the football. They've got a third down and five to start things out. from the gun it's Carr and that is incomplete six year man Marquette King on to punt back deep for the Bills Brandon Tate Uh, did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time able to get three. 
It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. Good move, but not much to show for it. Still inside the five. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. Now Taylor to throw on second down. And that is incomplete. Jordan Matthews, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation. So they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he'll kick it away for the second time. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Nice stiff arm. Underused, but still effective. And call that an even 50 yards on the punt with seven on the return. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. On first and ten, here's Carr. Over the middle, Cooper with it. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. get to him. Marcel Darius in there to drop him for a loss of 10 and it'll be fourth and long. Well the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and it can often hit big but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. You know what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Here's Marquette King now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. 
Yeah, here come the Bills. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. down it's Taylor caught on the right side by Jones and he'll get this up to the 34 yard line 14 yards and the Bills will get a new set of downs we love talking about bloodlines in the NFL and Zay Jones fits that category perfectly the rookie at East Carolina his father Robert was a linebacker in the league and his uncle Jeff Blake a quarterback in the NFL as well and Zay 399 catches at East Carolina a D1 record First down carry here for McCoy. And some room to work. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 10 yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. For McCoy in the last seven years, five of them over 1,000 yards. Underrated in how strong he is through the hole, but the best part of his game, open field, where he makes a whole lot of people miss. In 2016, he was seventh in the league in rushing yardage. left and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield it'll be a pickup of five on the keeper it's second down you know Taylor has had his arsenal ran for 580 yards last year number one amongst quarterbacks yeah, he doesn't just run around he runs with a purpose that's why he's able to gain good yardage when he takes off those 580 yards by the way broke the franchise record for quarterback rushing yards set by Tyrod Taylor the year earlier Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Cleo Mack's starting to get a really big-time reputation as a pass rusher, and rightly so. So explosive off the edge getting to the quarterback. But he doesn't neglect his run duties as well. How about that tackle right there? Such a package he has. Able to play the run and the pass so well. The Bills on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 8. Here we go. Fred 38. Fred 38. From the gun, it's Taylor. And the Raiders have got him. Khalil Mack in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Amari Cooper and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. They've got the lead. They haven't really had to utilize him all that much so far, but I guess if you're winning on the scoreboard, not too much to complain about. Not at all, but you know those guys out wide. They want as many catches as they can possibly get. They may need him later on if things get a little tighter. Yeah, so far, two catches. We'll see what happens here as the game progresses. Yeah. 
He'll start on the ground with Lynch. Shifts by him at the 25. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. throw on second down. His throw incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and it's third and four. The Raiders on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and four. Operating from the gun, Carr, and brought in by the tight end, Cook. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down. And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Tenth carry of the game for Marshawn Lynch. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Keep pounding here with Lynch. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. From the gun now on third down, Carr. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there. Come out of the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. fake here on first down and his throw is going to be incomplete Amari Cooper the intended target and that'll bring up second down looks like the defense in press coverage here to the ground, Lynch, and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. From the gun on third down, Carr, and this is going to be incomplete. Here's Marquette King now, as he's on to punt for Oakland. Oh. 
And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Jordan Matthews here getting ready to go again on offense. Looking down at the stats here, realizing he has no catches. They've targeted him twice, but no catches. So how do they get him more involved, Charles? You make sure he touches it on routes that he likes to run. Maybe even run a reverse or some type of a jet sweep so he gets his hands on the ball and get him active and involved in the game. You just try and find ways to get him going, and it doesn't have to be something that's big downfield. Maybe kind of like in basketball, just a shooter seeing the ball go through. You get him a rep, get him more comfortable. I agree with that totally. Maybe set that solid screen and give him an easy look. And to this point, no catches. They go play action here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Navarro Bowman coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Only two yards on the carry. That's going to set up a third and long, third and 15 to be exact. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. The Bills on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This will be third and 15. And now here's a carry heading left. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Now Whistles and the Raiders are going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Colton Schmidt now, standing just outside his own goal line. <laughs> 51 yards on the punt there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Marshawn Lynch and the Raider offense heading back out there. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Throwing on first down is Carr. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Seth Roberts. That'll bring up second down. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play.
fresh set of downs here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. From midfield, here's Carr. And Cook has it, left side. And he's brought down. Give him 12 yards that time and an Oakland first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. First down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Cook. And he gets it down to the 32. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Shotgun now for Carr. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. The Raiders on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and four. throw again and he finds Cook and down he goes taking it inside the 10 to the 7 they're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal and in a lot of ways that catch is expected red zone presence and that one was realized there you've got to find your tight end in that situation Again, they'll throw with Carr. And he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. Lee Smith, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Raiders add six to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here in the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. Point after here, coming up. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with an Oakland touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that work 
but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here now, a look at LaShawn McCoy. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. He finds an opening past the 40. Unable to corral him. He fights through. And he finally goes down, but not before reaching the 21. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So here we go, first and 10 now. Here we go. Ryan 38. Ryan 38. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. He hit his first, this one from 38. And Hauschka's kick is good. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Raiders out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Bills trail at home at halftime. The Raiders have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Raiders with the ball late in the first. Carr is on point with the throw, and they cap off the drive with the score. That takes the lead up to seven. Final moments of the first half. Carr has got the completion here, and this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. The lead now at 11. First and 10. Look at Shady McCoy getting into open space. He'll pick up more than 40 yards on the play. So that'll do it from Orlando. Let's get you back up to Buffalo with Brandon and Charles. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Out comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. 
And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done they're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Now Carr, and this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. A Raider first down, 17 yards. Okay, it's time for me to break out my thesaurus for that one. And I don't have anything. <laughs> that was amazing. One-handed in this weather. I mean, you know the ball's got to be slick. But to be able to catch it and come down with it, what do they call that, the process of the catch? He completed it all the way through. So the offense has it first and 10. Now call. This one caught left side by Cooper. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So Amari Cooper out of Northwestern High School in Miami making a nice play there. And it's so funny that when I was going through the draft process when he came out of Alabama and was inquiring about him and his skills, they say it all began back in Miami. He really became a pro receiver at a young age because of his attention to detail and precision. But don't forget his athletic ability. That's what made that catch there. And he did spend one year with Teddy Bridgewater as his quarterback there, so that helped back in high school. Carr now on first down. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. It's funny, when I go back to our pregame meeting with Amari Cooper, and we mentioned, eh, what if they play man coverage against you? He almost seemed offended by it, didn't he? I'll beat it, that's basically what he <laughs> said, right? I mean, the best receivers we've ever talked to and covered, when you talk about covering them with one guy, they think that's a personal affront. If they feel like if they can't just beat one defender, then they're not very good. Snap comes at one, and it's Carr. And his throw is incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. And now it's second down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And now running right through it. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Raider touchdown. Marshawn Lynch, 27 yards. And the Raiders add on to their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit, get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on the second half, no matter what, whether well, it's first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Now the try here for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-6. to six. Five plays there on that drive, and it's all capped off by a Marshawn Lynch touchdown run. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard. So here's the Bills offense now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use, just something to get you go. off to a quick start. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Second down, Taylor looking middle, and it's incomplete. The Bills on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This will be third and six. from the shotgun, it's Taylor. He hits his man, Matthews. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Taylor to Matthews for the Buffalo first. Taylor. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zay Jones that time. And that'll bring up second down. Truthfully, I thought the offensive line did an excellent job on that play. We know they can only hold off pass rushers for so long. But I thought they did a great job keeping them at bay for a long, long time, even though he was hit at the end of that play. Again, now it's Taylor on second and ten. They'll set up the screen to McCoy. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. The Bills on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This time it's third and three. Taylor now to throw on third down. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Holmes. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. The Bills passing game getting him down the field. They've got another first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. First and ten, it's Taylor. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And yeah, he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll make it a second down.
And some options here for the offense on second and two. Taylor with a give to McCoy. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's going to be out of bounds down to the 25. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean... Oftentimes, the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Third and long. Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Let's go! Brian, 38! Taylor, from the gun, he'll throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. My high school coach, John Ford, used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket, and he throws into double coverage anyway. He called you laddie? He called me laddie, and that was the nicest thing he called me. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. And now Oakland ready to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? On first and ten, here's Carr. Throw left side complete. It's Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 12 yards that time and an Oakland first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. On first down, Carr. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Hey. 
to throw again. Carr is going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. He'll get a couple yards on that one, and that'll make it third down. on third down and they've been really good converting seven of their ten tries this is third and eight throwing his car on third down and he's going to go out of bounds taking it down inside the 25 holding offense That's a good chunk of yardage that's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? The Raiders on third down. They've been really good converting seven of their ten tries. This will be a tough third and 18. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And that is incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. Here's Marquette King now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Tenth carry now for McCoy. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. See if they stay on the ground for second down. From the gun, it's Taylor. This for his running back, McCoy. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It'll be a two-yard game, and that's going to lead to a third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Come on, let's go. Brand 38. Brand 38. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. And, partner, when you run the ball on third and two, you're telling the whole world you've got nothing but confidence in your offensive line and your runner, and you expect to get it. But they were stuffed on that play, only got one yard. Great job by the defensive front, the linebackers. Everyone got involved to force a fourth down. 
Here's Colton Schmidt now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And yeah, this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Derek Carr getting ready to go again on offense. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right? Not turning it over and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking deep in the direction of... He's got a man complete. He's at the 30, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, Oakland. Amari Cooper, 81 yards. And the Raiders add six to their lead. Well, they went play action there and set it up nicely for him. I mean, he can flat fly, and they hit him downfield. And it doesn't take much to create that extra bit of space that a guy of his speed needs. If you go play action, all you want is just a moment where the guy's covering take their attention somewhere else, and then he's by them. And once he's by them, there's no catching them. As they always like to say, if a receiver's even to a defensive back, that means he's leaving. Unless that DB is Charles Davis, right? In that case, he left me a long time ago. Come on now. <laughs> Trust me. Now the extra point try forthcoming. He's got it, and the lead swells. It's 28-6. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And the Bills getting set to go. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They go play action here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. Here's Taylor, going to throw again. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Bills on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and ten. Taylor now, operating from the gun. Going deep here for Matthews. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. 
and attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. This is taken at the 15. It's said and done. It's a 58-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again, we get a look at Amari Cooper as he heads back out there now. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. They start the drive with Lynch. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Car to throw on second down. Completes it right side to Cooper. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. The Raiders on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. Here it's third and two. Carr looking to throw on third and two. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's four. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped the pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to it? Maybe his rhythm confused. is just off. He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Here's Marquette King now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Now it's Tate. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Just short of the 45 at the 44. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four.
to the offense lining up first and ten. From the gun, Taylor. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Second down now after the incompletion. Now Taylor with a draw to McCoy. And he's got some space here. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. The offense on third down tonight, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. They're looking at third and a few inches. Operating from the gun, Taylor. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made, pure and simple. And look, everything else that goes into running a good pass route, throw it all out if you don't catch the ball. Been that kind of game throwing the football so far, nothing going right offensively. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And, oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back at the 46. One yard is the gain. And it'll give the Bills a first down. If he indeed got it, he didn't get it by much. This is a great push up front. But I think the nose of the football does make it over the line to gain. And whoa, that was definitely cutting it close. Taylor on first down. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoyed the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. He was looking for Matthews that time, and it's second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Here we go. Now Taylor to throw again. And he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. The Bills on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and ten. Now flags will come in. One of the Bills got going a little early.
The Bills on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This will be third and 15. To throw is Taylor. From the gun, he'll throw. Going up top. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on and it brings up fourth down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary, it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Come on, let's go! As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked off by David Amerson, and he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Amari Cooper and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. He's been a load for them to handle defensively. I know that much. Well, look at him. He's got seven catches on the game, and he's starting to shred them a little bit because not only is he catching them, he's picking up good yardage, keeping the chains moving, ball control, you name it. This big guy, what did you say? He's been a load for them to handle? That's right. He's Agreed. A, this seven catches, as you said, over 100 yards. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for him. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> and he'll power his way up near the 25. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brent, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now. And here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football. And that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. Nifty move. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. On the give, this is Lynch. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 more yards there and another first down. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Again, they'll pound it with Lynch. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. 
They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Three yards left to grab here on third down. Carr going option right. He can run for it, and he will. Pass the 20. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Big run here in the fourth as they continue to wear down this defense. And that's when the offensive line coach clicks onto the headset and says, head coach, offense coordinator, let my guys fire out and hit people. We're wearing them down. Let's finish them off with the running game. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. A great play there. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Raiders add on to their lead. We got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space, but how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends on the Jalen Richard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So second and ten here. Taylor throwing again over the middle, and it's incomplete. Yeah, 
So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look. Six DBs. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. And he finds a man with a crossing round. Yeah, they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end can be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Here's Taylor on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Come on, let's go! What? Nine, Again, it's Taylor. And incomplete. So many qualities coaches tick off when they talk about, hey, what is it going to take to make an excellent quarterback? Accuracy has to rank near the top of every list. Talk about arm strength. That's great. Mobility, great. But you need that accuracy in there. That one well in front of his man. Yeah, now they've got to face a big third down. On third down, Taylor. Open man is Holmes. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already, and they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. To throw again is Taylor. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. I think someone's going to get in the QB one's ear when he gets to the sideline. Already thrown an interception. That one should have been picked. Look, let's just be honest about it. That would be the second person in his ear because he's hearing it in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like you said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. A beautiful fake. A seven yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And Charles, in a very one-sided affair, I think we've reached the point in the broadcast where you and I, <laughs> we may have some filling to do, right? Yeah, I think you're right about that because we got to try to keep people around. We don't want them to change the channel. Stay with us in this game. Is that Ben Ramsar? Are you hearing from Ben on the headset here? Tell yeah. us, stretch, stretch this thing out a little bit. <laughs> get some talking points. Dig them all out. Uh, that's what you get. A big-time producer. Keep them here. Here's a give to Lynch. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, 
But I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. to throw after the play fake to Lynch. Finds Roberts left side. A big play that time for the Raiders. 42 yards. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> Go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. brought down 11 more on that one and another first down when a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it but for the most part it's a little bit of a surprise and right now they've got to keep that going want to continue to grind out the clock because it's definitely in their favor at this stage of the game. Can they close the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there? And that's run the football. Into the red zone. It's Carr. And pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Gonna give this time to the tailback. Second down a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Third down. That's complete right around the eight. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. They'll run with Lynch. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes him from the six inside the five to the four. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. Check, 24, 24, check 24. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They come out here in the eye. 
They try again with Lynch. And he'll get it down close to the goal line, but not quite in. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Now they've gotten it to the one. Can they get that final yard here on third and goal? Card out of throw. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you, can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline, and I think this one might just be over. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it winds up in six points for the Raiders. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Now the Bills' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team, and we were losing late in a game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Now Taylor to throw. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little gain. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Second down, Taylor. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 32. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now, to put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. <laughs> yes, get out of there. They'll run with Marshawn Lynch. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Second down following the run. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. 
Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gaud, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long from Buffalo.